Hi, it's Maura Gamble from Our Permaculture Life and the Permaculture Education Institute and welcome again to Live at Five in My Garden. Now today I was wanting to talk to you about tomatoes. Tomatoes are kind of one of those things that, you know, when you grow them and when you taste them straight from your garden, you go, oh, that's right, that's what a tomato tastes like. And that's one of the reasons why I love to grow my own food is because of the taste and the flavour and, and just the fact that the types of varieties of tomatoes that you grow in your own garden are the older type of varieties that you can save seeds from year after year after year. And actually, after a while, they just start self-seeding. I haven't actually grown tomato. I haven't seeded tomatoes in my garden for, I don't know, 15 years, but every year I have some. And it's interesting that they actually tend to go more towards the wild cherry tomato because these are the ones that are the wildest form of tomatoes. I think something around 700 BC was when they were domesticated in the Andes. It's amazing how many plants actually originated from there. And the, and the Aztec word, I'm I'm not going to try and pronounce it, is actually the stem of the word of tomato. So it goes way back to then and it's one of those original plants. So how do you grow tomatoes simply and easily? Maybe you missed the seedlings and the seeds. So that's kind of what I wanted to show you today. So if you can find a tomato in the store, you can actually just slice it up and put that into a pot and it will grow. Now it won't prosper most likely it won't grow the type of tomato that you planted because most of the ones we get in stores are actually hybrid which means that they've crossed between some kind of flavoursome or um, some kind of quality for transportation um, with a with a wild hardy kind of variety so everything kind of tends back towards the wild ones and I love these ones because they have so much flavour and they they continue to harvest uh, you continue to harvest them over a very long period of time and they seem to be far less pest prone than many of the others so if you're looking for a simple way um, get those happening so you can take one from from a shop and slice it up and do that if you already have some kind of wild tomatoes I'm going to ask Evan to sort of look down here sometimes you find them self seeding in the garden so this one here it was just popping up in a um, in a pathway where I didn't want it to grow so you can see in here actually that there's a series of little plants so you can actually divide them up and separate into sort of three or four plants there but you could just as well Dig that up gently and then put that into some other part of your garden. So you can take that with, a, with its soil and its roots and then either pop it into a pot. So you could just take it into a pot like this and just plant like that and take it onto your veranda. So if you've got a friend who's got a tomato plant or you've seen some self-seeding tomato somewhere, that's all you need to do. So it's as simple as that. Now, alternatively, you could also take... Oops, I'll make sure I don't snip my microphone cord. Um from a, a, a cutting from part of the stem so what you need to be looking at is one of a section like this so you could uh, take just snip it off right down close to the stem there and then remove some of these lower lower leaves actually I find it easy with my fingernail it's not quicker than scissors let me put my scissors down so just snip them off gently always pulling again upwards so I don't damage the, the stem and then something like that and then sometimes people put that into water until it gets roots but I'm just as happy to stick that straight in like this so if I was in the garden I would just be putting that straight back into the garden somewhere or with these ones I would just put them in a spot where I, where I would like them now something that people didn't know about the the leaves of tomato is that it's actually edible so I'm not sure whether you've ever tried eating tomato leaves before but there are lots of recipes that you can google and find out so these ones you could um, just cook them up like you would a spinach you can add them into a pesto you can make all different sorts of sauces from them you can add them into pasta sauce uh, so there's another uh, leafy green that's available to you and no it's not toxic so that's a bit of a myth that's been put forward um, so you can even eat the flowers but I tend to like to leave the flowers so that we get more fruit but you can add those to salad if you like they're a tiny bit bitter but there's actually nothing really wrong with bitter food We've, we've kind of t um, taken away a lot of the bitter food that is normally in some of the traditional vegetables. But bitters are things that help to um, stimulate our digestion. So if you do have some bitter foods added into your salads or whatever it is that you're eating, that's a really good thing. So eat the leaves, take cuttings from the stems, um, squirt out 
uh, let me just grab one of these tomatoes. So if you've got one of these tomatoes, you could also just plant a tomato full or whole or squish it a bit. I just squish it until all the little seeds come out and just plant that in and then that will uh, that will grow like that. Uh, you know, quite often I just, if I want some tomatoes in a particular part of the garden, I'll just go and throw a few tomatoes in that particular spot and let them self-seed next season. Now you might have noticed that I've harvested a few green tomatoes here too. So green tomatoes are also edible. Uh, so green tomatoes are really good for making things like um, chutneys or adding to sauces or um, you've probably heard of the, the film uh, where they had the fried green tomatoes. So there's so many recipes for that too. So what I wanted to say was that we don't have to wait until we've just got the perfect red ripe tomato. We can be eating the plant all the way along from the moment that it starts to sprout. So we can eat the young leaves, we can eat the leaves on the larger plants, we can eat the flowers, we can eat the green tomatoes and we can eat the red ones too. And then all of these different ways for propagating either from the self-seeding ones, from the, from the ripe ones and from cuttings too. So I hope that's been helpful to you. Oh, before I go, I wanted to show you um, a couple of days ago, we were making um, chia. I sprinkled out some chia seed uh, onto this tray of, of just plain potting mix and gave it a water. And so this is what it is a couple of days later. And um, so this is what's going to be going into my salad tonight. Uh, it's really, really nice. So maybe some of the tomatoes and the chia, chia um, sprouts are going to be going into um, in a beautiful salad for dinner which will be wonderful so you know you just get your scissors you snip that along and you take that they won't re-sprout so once you finish this tray you'll have to start again and do another one which is why it's a great idea to have a series of of microgreens trays happening all right well join me again tomorrow at five and we'll talk about another plant and another way that you can get just simple abundance in your garden just using things that are common and often around you or in your kitchen or on the supermarket shelves. Um, also, I'll put links below to, to the, to the COVID-19 Resilience Care Pack, which has the, the information about how to get your garden going really simply, and also a link to my um, new four-part series on permaculture, what is it, and how to make it part of your life and livelihood too. So thanks for joining me. And don't forget, you can, I'm, I encourage you to share this as, as widely as you can as well. If you think you know, if you think someone that might benefit from this information, just flick it on to them. I'm happy for this to spread as, as far as it needs to. All right, well, join me again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.